You're listening to 90.9 FM, WIRQ, Ronda Quaid's home for new music and great classics. Welcome to this week's episode of Cues in the Morning for the week of May 21st, 2015. I'm Mike, as always, as we are wrapping up um, the last few podcasts of this show, sadly. But um, I promise it'll be the best of it. We still have a lot of time. So we have a lot of topics to talk about today. It's been really a dull week in sports, so it's been really hard to find something. But we had some Stanley Cup playoff game last night and um, a game uh, the day before on Tuesday. And we also had a couple NBA games last night as well in the playoffs, as well as some baseball games and more NFL news because everyone loves that. So I'm going to start you guys off with some NHL. It was game three of the um, Eastern Conference Finals between the New York Rangers and the Tampa Bay Lightning. New York Rangers... Uh, and, the, and the Lightning had a high-scoring affair, but the Rangers fell 6-5 to five in overtime, and right in the beginning of overtime, and the Rangers are down 2-1. to one. That's all for the series from, for now, and Game 4 will be tomorrow night, I believe. It'll be, it'll be either tomorrow night or Saturday. And on Tuesday, the Chicago Blackhawks played the... Anaheim Ducks, and they took it to triple overtime. It's the first triple overtime game in um, conference final history in, in the NHL. And the Blackhawks uh, did win that affair, and they take they, t- they tied the series one-to-one. They played a night, their game three. So hockey's heating up. Um, also some Rangers news. I'm all over the place today, as always. Rangers news, Matt Zuccarello took the ice. Um, for the first time since since his injury, and he was supposed to be out indefinitely. But if uh, experts are saying if this game, if this series takes to a game seven, and the Rangers win and make it to the finals, Zuccarello could be ready by midway through that series, which is big for the New York Rangers, and they will have their front man back. So, sports news as well. Uh, a lot of baseball happened last night, of course. And I'm gonna read you guys some of the scores. Kansas City Royals defeated the Cincinnati Reds seven to one. Yankees. Uh, fall the Nationals three to two, the Giants beat the Dodgers four nothing. Pir- uh, Pirates fall the Twins four to three in thirteen innings. The Braves beat the Rays two to one in interleague matchup. The uh, the Cubs beat the Padres three to two. Mariners beat the Orioles four to two. Uh, Phillies beat the Rockies four to two. Indians beat the White Sox four to three. Astros beat the Athletics six to one. Cardinals beat the Mets nine nothing. D-backs beat the Marlins 6 to 1. Angels beat the Blue Jays 4 to 3. Rangers with the returning of Josh Hamilton beat the Red Sox 2 to 1. Tigers defeated the Brewers 5 to 2 in last night's games. So in baseball obviously, uh the two juggernauts in the National League are the New York Mets and the St. Louis Cardinals as they battled it out. A few days ago they had a game, I think believe back in Monday night, they took it to 14 innings in New York 1, but the Cardinals won the series in that one and on the series two out of three games, the Mets play the Pirates this weekend on Memorial Day weekend, and on the other side of the New York, the Yankees, who are struggling against the Nationals right now, they're um, also lost a series. I think they got swept as they fall um, last night, and they also, I believe, on Monday night as well, they lost in a walk off by none other than the home run leader in MLB right now, Bryce Harper. So. That's Major League Baseball for you for now. We have, we're have halfway through the month of May, and the All-Star break is in July. We are in the second full month of baseball, almost ready for the third, and things are looking to shape up. And other news also for the Mets before I lose my thought. New York Mets third baseman David Wright will be taking swings in his uh, rehab games in uh, Las Vegas. Um, for his injury with his right hamstring. And also their catcher, Travis Darno, who had a fractured wrist a, f- a number of weeks ago, will hopefully be back in the Mets lineup within this weekend or the, or the following week. So a lot of good coming back for the New York Mets from injury, up- from injury updates at least. So that's all for baseball for now. So now we go to our f- always, always fun NFL news. Um, this week, finally, which it uh, ended, ended abruptly, the um, whole deflate gate scandal is finally over. There is no more talk about it. There is no more new information. Everything that we know 
um, is all out on the table and it's all done and over with. Um, Robert Kraft, the owner of the New England Patriots, came out on the podium this week and said, we're done with the appeal, we dropped the appeal, we accept the penalty, and it's over. Tom Brady will serve the four-game suspension, but won't be back till week six because of a bye week. And um, in that game, they're playing the Indianapolis Colts. So, funny. Whoever made that schedule was uh, was uh, hilarious. Of course, the Deflate Gate scandal happened in the AFC Championship game when the New England Patriots played the Indianapolis Colts. So, many people were talking about having that title, their title uh, stripped of them, which it's happened before in many professional sports, but um, the the way of the game went, the Patriots were winning by halftime when the balls were deflated anyways, and then they ended up scoring even more, and the Colts didn't have any offense. So, Obviously, the title shouldn't have been stripped as we move on from that. But also, more in the NFL headlines, we have um, a big battle. We call it the Battle of Los Angeles because there are three teams right now in the in the looks to go to Los Angeles. As they're looking to build a stadium in L.A. to host a Super Bowl, but they need an NFL team active there. So they're down to three teams. They're down to the St. Louis Rams the Oakland Raiders, and the San Diego Chargers. Now, there's been a lot of protests in San Diego because many of the fans d- don't want the Chargers to leave, and they want them to stay in San Diego. And it looks like none of the fan base, obviously, or no one really is interested in having a team move to Los Angeles. But the NFL is dead set on having a team there because they're already going to have a Super Bowl there in 2020. They need a team by... They need an NFL team... In Los Angeles by 2018, otherwise they can't hold the Super Bowl in Los Angeles. So there has been, there's going to be talk all season, all next season, because they have two years to figure this out, two three years, and it's going to be down between the San Diego Chargers, Oakland Raiders, and the St. Louis Rams. Funny enough, the Oakland Raiders and the San Diego Chargers owners both signed a contract to share a stadium if they were were to move to L.A. So there would be two. LA teams, which makes no sense. So there's been protests everywhere, and there's been a lot of media trying to find, trying to talk to the owners of those three teams. And the one who seems most frustrated is the Oakland Raiders because they're trying to stay in Oakland, but though they're trying to move to LA, it's very confusing. Do you want an Oakland Raiders team who has been struggling for the past ten years move to Los Angeles and do what for them? Or do you want to have the St. Louis Rams, who were originally in Los Angeles, move back to L.A. and even more money spent? Or do you want the Chargers to move from San Diego to Los Angeles? And it's all up to the, to the uh, team owner. The, N- the NFL is, is ready. Right now, we can have one of those three owners say, we're, we're ready. Um, we've signed contracts to release from the city. We want to move. That's it. And that's all it's going to be. So we have another two and a half years to discuss about that. That, that will be um, in the back of everybody's head. But that is all really for NFL news for now. Um, there's been a lot of draft talks, um, after post-draft talks about Jameis Winston and Marcus Mariota and how he, they will both um, show their skills in the NFL when it comes to week one and even leading up to training camp. There's been a lot of stories about that. But obviously, we're in May. It's the it's the NFL offseason. What more articles are you going to get? But the next football game we will get will be in August. It'll be the Hall of Fame game between the Steelers and the Vikings. And um, many people are excited for that. Everyone know the Bills play last year's Hall of Fame game. So, moving on from that, we had one basketball game last night. in um, the East, It was Eastern Conference Finals between the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Atlanta Hawks. And the Cavs defeated the Hawks 97-89. I never really... Uh, go into analysis in these games, but I think I should. LeBron James had 31 points and obviously hit the leaderboards. Um, the Cavs are leading this series one nothing. It was game one of that last night, and I believe the Western Conference is tonight. And I think it's um, I think it's game two as Golden State plays Houston, as Golden State leads that series one nothing. But we do know that the uh, Blackhawks and Ducks play tonight, so that's well, that's your uh, what to watch for. And I'm gonna take a break. You listen to Cues in the morning at 90.9 FM WIRQ. I'm going to come back with a play 
of the week. And I'm going to have that starting for the next for the last few episodes of this podcast. I'm going to have a play of the week. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to have it begin in every episode. And like, I, like we had last week with the Rangers in that Game 7 goal. What I'm going to do, I'm going to have a play of the week from any sport that's going on right now. And um, we, will move, we will move on from that. And we will have that start at the beginning of every show. So I'm going to take a break. You listen to Q's in the morning, 90.9 FM WIRQ. I'm going to play you guys some a data member to wake you guys up. Here is um, Downfall of Us All, 90.9 FM WIRQ. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Q's in the morning on 90.9 FM WIRQ. It is currently at the, at the moment 9.55 in the morning. And welcome back to the podcast. This is our second half. So we go back to our little recap from today, we talked about the NFL and how um, teams are trying to move to Los Angeles. The whole Tom Brady appeal is done and over with. Um, and also, um, NHL games, they're on tonight. And there's a game on last night, the Rangers and the Lightning. They went to overtime. So that leads me to my play of the week. That leads to the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning with an overtime goal of three and a half minutes in the uh, overtime period where um, the, uh, the Lightning scored over the Rangers 6-5 to five the win. That's my play of the week. But next week I will have the audio for it, and that will start off the top of the show. No matter what sport is going on currently, I will have um, the audio for that, and then on the podcast you'll get to watch the play. So, um, until then, really, we have another few weeks left of May. We have, by the time this month is over, we will have a Stanley Cup champion, and we will have an NHL champion. All right, and then, <laughs> hold on. We'll have a Stanley Cup champion and an NBA champion. Wow, I just said two of the same sports. It's almost Friday. But anyways, um, May is almost over. Ju- when June hits, baseball will be almost at the All-Star break, which is hard to believe. I felt like just yesterday I was talking about baseball beginning. And now we're heading towards, towards June. The All-Star break is in July. And... We move on from that. NFL training camp begins in August, er, in July, end of July, beginning of August. Preseason games are in August. Training camps in July, I believe. So, football is on the horizon, as always. Uh, the weather needs to warm up because it needs to be in the 80s. Because we're in May and I had to wear a jacket today. So, again, that's really all I can talk about. There really isn't anything left in the NFL that is happening. Um, not a lot of things in hockey that are going on. Not a lot. Of, not a lot to really analyze when there's only two games in uh, each sport. But I did find an article um, on the break, and it involves the New York Mets. Um, the Mets just losing to the Cardinals nine nothing, and even though they just bo- got bounced off of first place, even with injuries, they have two key injuries. Terry Collins, is, uh, the manager of the Mets, is not concerned because. The New York Mets have done better than they've done all all season in the past few years, and they've had a positive record maintained throughout the rest of the, throughout the season so far. Although they're out of first place, they had a lot of tough games lately. They host the Pirates in the Memorial Day weekend. They hope to get their catcher Travis Darno back in the lineup, and by then the Mets hopefully could be winning games and can top the Nationals who are in first place. And also. There is one undefeated pitcher left in New York. There is Matt Harvey, who they call the Dark Knight, who is still 6-0. The last two games he had were non-decisions. Also, it has been a big concern about the Mets pitching and how it's starting to fall off and how the Mets' bats are not doing anything, not producing anything. And I was concerned in the beginning of the season because they were peaking very early and that's not what you want in a baseball team. So... The concern here is why the Mets aren't panicking, which obviously is a good is a good psychological factor. But the fact that they're not producing runs and they're not playing fundamental baseball, the pitching, the defense cannot do everything. They were obviously shut down yesterday, and they were they were losing like ten nothing. Uh, they lost ten to nothing, um, or ten to two, the um, the following day on um, Tuesday. But the New York Mets need to find their bat support. Hopefully that'll help when they get their catcher Travis Darno back and also David Wright back. Um, although they have been successful, both of them gone, they need to find their bat power. Um, the really only person I see stepping up 
is Curtis Granderson, who's been hitting the ball more and, and um, getting more extra base hits and also hitting a lot of more, a lot more home runs. Um, the Mets slugger Lucas Duda has been struggling a lot as well. And these are just key factors at, at the point that the New York Mets need to focus and they need to not struggle um, fundamentally in the bat, on bats. And they also need to um, find their strength and find their fundamentals with pitching as well. They're giving up nine to ten to nine, nine to ten runs against the Cardinals, who are the best team in the National League, though. But the Mets are up there, and they're at the point this season that they can um, need to protect their house, need to defend what they have, and they need to play fundamental baseball. Otherwise, you're gonna fall back to the third or fourth place, and the Mets need the Mets can't afford that another, another one this season. Otherwise, Terry Collins will be fired. We all know that. A losing coach isn't going to give you a winning season. It's common sense. So looking at that, New York Mets have the Pittsburgh Pirates for this Memorial Day weekend. And um, that's really all. That, that are, big, are big concerns for the New York Mets. And although it is very, very early in the podcast today, I do have a fear of uh, having to end early. Because there hasn't been a lot going on. And there is also... Just so much, there's a lot of playoff games. There's not a lot to talk about in these playoff games. Otherwise, the overtime thrill in, New York, in uh, Tampa Bay with the Lightning and the Rangers. The triple overtime game in Chicago, which was extraordinary. They play again tonight. And maybe that's what I'll do. I'll go in depth and analysis with these games. And um, I will give you my personal opinion about it. But as always, leave a comment on the, on the podcast. It helps a lot. It helps immensely with. with um, with what I can do better. There's only a few episodes left, guys. And um, I really want to do my best to, to make it go out in, a, in the best limb as possible. So, again, next week we'll start off with the Player of the Week. And we'll go, go on that until the series the series is over. And we will also um, analyze the games. Analyze playoff games and the uh, New York games like the Yankees and the Mets for baseball. And, again, talk about NFL news. But before I do go, I do have one more NFL news. Um, everyone loves it, right? Everyone loves talking about um, news in the NFL, not scores or football games. But um, NFL owners did gather this uh, earlier this week and made a new rule about extra points. Now, here the whole story on that is that there are two options to score an extra point in football. Everyone knows there is the extra point field goal or there is the two-point conversion. Now, for... Um, the change for this coming season, they are having um, the field goal extra point um, moved back at the 15-yard line. So it's a, it's like a 35-yard field goal or a 30-yard field goal or whatever the number is. But the two-point conversion is still at the two. So this means that the field goal is more is longer, but it's still a chip shot, which, in my opinion, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. If you move it back, but also it, it puts a little edge on it because if the weather's bad, even a basic thirty-yard field goal, depending on the wind, is gonna be is gonna be difficult to kick. And I mean that's an average field goal is a thirty to thirty-five yard field goal, maybe even forty for some kickers. But again, it it changes a lot of factors and also deflates. Huh? Get it? Deflate? It also stops the um the uh, fake field goal um conversion for the extra point for a two-point conversion as well so if any teams like like Seattle did in that um playoff game even though it was a field goal attempt um that kind of stops the whole fake field goal aspect of an extra point to get a two-point conversion and to throw off the uh special teams defense but the extra point has been moved up to the um 15 yard line instead of the two and that uh, it's really all that the NFL has to offer besides the moving of the teams someone in Los Angeles. We'll figure it out. Um they did have a list of Super Bowl um stadiums that they're going to have. This coming year is in Santa Clara and then in the Niners new stadium of Levi Stadium. And then it moves to Minnesota, I believe. And in their new stadium stadium that they're building. And then then um also another finalist is Miami and then of course the ominous city of Los Angeles. So a lot on the horizon in the NFL. Um, the flake gate is finally over, so we can throw a party because it's finally done. And um, that's really all for the NFL for now, unless something big happens, like another scandal or someone gets released or trades. I want to see trade news. 
<clears throat> excuse me, trade news is the best thing to talk about in the NFL, especially when I was talking about in March, the whole Jimmy Graham trade. I was excited because, because of that, because during the free agency, there was, nothing was expected. Everything just happened, and no one expected Jimmy Graham to get traded to the Saint, er, from the Saints to the Seahawks. So trade trades are kind of looming. They need... Um, they need to happen more <laughs> as an NFL fan. But, again, we're in the calm before the storm for the NFL at the moment. And, um, really, July is when we hit training camp. We might see some injuries here and there. And that's really about it for the NFL. Hockey will have a Stanley Cup champion in the next two weeks. Uh, basketball will have an NBA champion in the next couple of weeks. The um, Also, what to watch for. Speaking of basketball, the Rockets and the, and the Warriors play tonight and, as the Warriors lead the series 1-0. And the Blackhawks and the Ducks play tonight as well after that triple overtime thriller. They played equivalent, a little fun fact for you, they played um, equivalent to two games of hockey la- uh, last time they played on Tuesday. Um, which is very interesting because triple overtime, that's going to be a lot. Especially for a game of hockey where you're, you're on the, the ice constantly. And there really isn't any breaks. There's no timeouts. There's no time for water breaks unless you're on the bench. So to play two games worth of hockey to count for one game, it's a lot. And that series is tied at one. Um, that it's a very it's gonna be a very tight series as well as the Eastern Conference. Um, Rangers and Lightning play again. I think Friday, Friday night or Saturday night. I do believe it. It might be Saturday. So until then, you're listening to Keeps in the Morning. On 90.9 FM WIRQ, I'm going to see you guys next week. And it should be more exciting and jam-packed episode, with, especially with the play of the week. And I'll find more interesting things to talk about because there's obviously got to be something inter- more interesting than, than the playoffs that are going on right now than just to beat, beat a dead horse with it. So until then, I will see you guys next week. As always, you listen to 90.9 FM WIRQ, and I'll play you guys some more music. Until then, I'm out of here.